Okay, what is going on guys? It's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another video. So this is going to be another hardware tutorial showing you guys how to tear down the Xbox Series X controller. When I say tear down, don't worry, I, we are going to put it back together. <laughs> We're not just going to leave it in pieces in case you want to replace any of the buttons, the sticks, the, um, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Or if you're going to paint it or change the LED or something like that uh, for customization, repair purposes, any of that kind of stuff. That's what I'm going to be covering here in this video. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is take off these little panels at the back, at the sides here. Now, these can be quite stiff. If you've opened them before, then, you know, they can be quite easy. You can just kind of get your fingers, your nails in there and pull them out. Um, but obviously, when you first do this for the first time, these can be very, very stiff and difficult to get out. So um, what I would recommend doing is start where the triggers are. So you start where the triggers are here and you get the... You know, get a plastic pry tool, guitar pick, credit cards, something like that, um, that you can get in there or a butter knife or something. You just want to kind of pull up like that so you can see it kind of gets loose and then work your way down. Once, you're, once you get that bit open, you can just kind of slide this down and keep prying out. Eventually, you can see it opens up more. Then you can pretty much just pull it off. So... There we go, comes off like that. And then you just wanna do the same thing on the other side. So again, we're just gonna try and pry this bit up like that. And then start working our way down. There we go. And then once it's open like that, you can then get your fingers under it and just pull and it'll come off. So that's those bits off right now. Now what you'll notice is the screws right here are actually security torque screws. You can see they have a little bit in the middle that sticks up. So if you try and use a normal torque screwdriver, you're not gonna be able to get the screws out. So what you need is a T8 security torque screwdriver. So this is one right here. So the security torque screwdriver basically has a little hole in the middle so that you can get it in there and it will get the screws out. Now, if you do not have one of these and you're desperate to open the controller, uh, you really need to open the controller right now and you don't have a security torque screwdriver and you can't run out and get one, then you can take the screws out by other means. It's not recommended, but you can. So basically what you can do if you're in a pinch is you can get a flathead screwdriver, quite a small flathead screwdriver, not entirely sure the exact size, um, but just try every small flathead screwdriver you have and you get that in between the screw and the bit in the middle and you just keep turning it and either the screw is going to come out or the bit in the middle is going to snap off and when it snaps off then you can get a normal um, you know t8 screwdriver right here that doesn't have the hole in the middle and as you see I can take out the screw no problem with a normal t8 screwdriver now because that little bit in the middle, that security bit in the middle, I snapped off with that little flathead screwdriver. So if you're in a pinch, a flathead screwdriver, a small flathead and a regular T8 torque screwdriver will work. Um, but generally, obviously you should use the right tool for the job, which is a, a T8 security torque screw driver, which will work just fine. So there's, there's another screw up here, as you can see, that we're gonna take out. And then up here as well, on this side of the controller, there's another screw. So we're gonna remove that. And then of course, this one on the end of the controller here. Okay, so once you've got all four of those screws out, as you can see right there, we're then going to remove the battery compartment. And we're gonna take out one final screw that's underneath the sticker here. If you run your finger along the sticker, you'll feel where that indentation is. It's right in the middle. So you're just gonna get a security torque screwdriver again, puncture that sticker and uh, start unscrewing the screw. And you'll feel the controller become very loose. Okay, there we go. So at this point, we can then take the back off just like that. Quite simple, comes off real nice and easy. So if I zoom in here a little bit so you can see. So this is what we have now with the controller. It's very similar, obviously, to a Xbox One controller. Pretty much identical. The only kind of main difference is 
are that you have uh, these two black wires going from this PCB to this PCB. They're plugged in up here. So we're just going to take out these connectors that are connecting the two PCBs together, these black wires. So we're going to take those off. Get the tweezers under there, get that one off. You can use your fingers as well if you get the black wires and you can just pull them off with your fingers. Um, so yeah, now you've got those off. The next thing we have is to take off quite a few other things. So this um, kind of plastic shell that this is sitting in just comes off. So that's this bit here. This will just come off like that, real simple. Um, you do have access to the D-pad. You can take the D-pad off if you wish. Um, it just kind of pulls off like this. So you can take the D-pad off. And of course, you can also take off the sticks now as well. If you're wanting to get access to those to replace any of that stuff, you can take those all off there. You can't take any of these buttons out though until you get to um, till you get this PCB off. You have to get access to it from this side. The next thing we need to do then is take this plastic piece off. So the bits at the front, so this piece of plastic here and the two bumpers need to come off. So to take the plastic piece off, you can literally just lift it up with your fingers like that. It will just come off fairly straightforward. Um, the bumpers on the other hand have little clips at the side. So, so maybe you can see there, uh, this is a little clip. So if I pull that off there, that little clip that was over the bumper, then the whole thing should just lift off. And you can get it off at the other side. So that's the right and left bumper. It's actually all one piece. So now you have those open. So the next thing we need to do is open up the rumble motors that are inside the triggers. Because we need to get these um, rumble motors that are attached to the gray and black wires out. Um, that way we can take the whole PCB off. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is get rid of these screws that are on the triggers. Once you have the controller open, the rest of the screws are all um, just regular T6 screws. So you can just use a T6 screwdriver to get rid of those. Get those screws out. So this is the left trigger. So if we just pull out from the left there, it should just come off. And then you've got this black wire that runs all the way down here. We're gonna have to release that. So take these black wires off, get the, free them from all of these little clips here that hold the wires in place so that uh, the whole wire is, is loose. Just like that, we've got the rumble motor out there. Then you have the uh, the right trigger, so we're gonna do the same thing with the right trigger. So again, T6 screwdriver um, for those. Oh, that's magnetic. Anyway, um, so we're gonna take that screw out and again, do the same thing, just lift this off. And then the same deal with this, you're just going to route these wires out of the out of their little routing grooves that go along the controller there so that they're now loose once they're loose you can then take out the um, the actual rumble motors themselves so they just pull out it can be quite hard to get them out sometimes because there's this little plastic piece here that holds them in place. But uh, once you get them out like that, we're now ready to take out the first PCB. So again, um, there's a couple of screws here on either side. Again, these are T6 screws, regular T6 screws, not security torques. So we're just going to get those out. We're just going to pull those out like so. Okay, so at this point, we can unplug this board from the, the board it's plugged into. So we pull up on this, and then the whole board lifts out just like that. So as you can see, that is the front of the board right there. And there is the back. So you now have access to that board with the rumble motors just hanging off there. 
So now if we have a look at the kind of main PCB, so there's a, there's a bunch more screws here, as you can see. So there's a screw here, here, one in the middle there, one there, and one there. And of course, one sneaky one in the corner there as well. Also, this uh, headphone jack just comes off. There's uh, nothing holding it in place. It's just sandwiched between the two PCBs. Okay, so there it is. With all those screws out, we can now lift off this PCB. And uh, yeah, so there it is right there. Got the PCB out. On the back side here, uh, you've got where all the buttons are, the D-pad. And of course, there is the power LED, which appears to be, I think, an 0805 LED. Um, sized LED for the power so if you're going to replace that you're going to want a, an 0805 or an 0603 would probably fit as well so yeah anyway that's it you've got the PCB out and then you have access to all the buttons here so this little rubber strip comes off and then you can just pop the buttons out like that so there's your power button and uh, all the other little buttons are here as well there's B so you can just take all of those buttons out. So that's how you fully take apart the Xbox uh, Series X controller piece by piece. So now you've done all your modifications, the controllers in bits, how do we put it back together? So to put everything back together, starting off, we're gonna put this strip back on, make sure it's laying over there correctly. Then we're gonna grab the PCB, put it upside down on top, just like that. And of course, we're gonna put the screws in so just grab the screws with some tweezers or something because they're quite small screws and we're just going to pop them in. I recommend just doing the middle screw first to hold it in place. Right, so once you've got all the screws back in, you want to add the headphone jack thing on. So you want the bit that has all the little pins uh, facing towards you, facing up like that. Um, and then we're going to take the PCB, the second PCB, and uh, obviously just line this up on top like that um, and then we're going to make sure you get these black wires that are underneath out of the way so that they're not being crushed by the PCB so just grab those so they're not underneath it I'm just gonna line it up and plug it in so that the two slots are plugged in like that so fairly straightforward so far. Now we're gonna put the other screws back in. So the screws that we have, as you can see, one goes in here. Screw that back in. And then the other one goes in this corner. Again, T6, Torx 6. Um, and then we'll just put the, the motors in. So they might kind of not go in at first. So the way you want to do it, yeah, getting these in can be kind of awkward at times because there's this piece of plastic that kind of sticks out at you. So maybe if I get a flathead screwdriver, jam it in here and just lift that up a bit so I can get it in. There we go. So you kind of want to turn this around a little bit um, so that these wires are kind of hidden more like that so the wires are obviously you don't want it too tight so it's tugging on the wires but just have the wires in there like that so that they're not sticking out too much and then of course the same on the other side here so make sure they're not tangled and we're gonna pop them in like this obviously this way around so this bit's sticking outwards there's actually another piece of plastic that's further down that sticks up here. You have to kind of pull back to get it in. Um, it's quite hard to see. But uh, if you do that, then you shouldn't have much problems. And then again, we'll twist it so that the wire is, is sitting in there neatly. Okay, so that's the two rumble motors in. Okay, so now for the rumble motor here, that we're going to put the right one on first. So you want to sit the controller up like this, have the trigger down like that. Uh, and then have the wires sticking out to the left on the right trigger. I would hold the wires down to the left here so that the, you know, so that it doesn't spring too much up in the other direction. And then we're going to put this, this little hole over this plastic bit that sticks up here to get the trigger back on. 
stick the trigger back on like that and then if we flip it round to the other side we can uh, just hold it in and get the screw in. I'm going to grab the screw and stick it in like that and then grab a screwdriver T6 and get that screw back in. Uh, the next thing we need to do is route the cable properly because um, as you can see it's a, it's a bit of a mess right now. So to route the cable properly or the, to the wires um, basically you want to just stick them out here get them running down in these little grooves that they're supposed to go in. So there's this one here and then it runs down there's another little groove in here. We're going to put that in and then in this one here just make sure that's in properly right the way in and then finally there's this one at the corner that you're gonna put that in now they're in properly all right so then that's routed properly and you should be able to use the right trigger um, so that's that one. So now we need to do the same with this one. So again, stick it up like this We're gonna get the wires this time the wires facing to the right not the left and Again can be tricky because this likes to move around um, And then we're gonna get this trigger on like that turn it upside down and uh, Get the screw in all right, now we do the same thing with this wire. So again, it pops back in like so. So it runs through the top, top part here. So we're gonna route it. Again, you wanna leave enough space so that it can you can actually push the trigger down without tugging on the wire. Um, and then we're just gonna push that in Make sure that is secure. And then it runs down here. So that I can route it properly around. And through here. I want it in underneath this. Like that. And finally, we've got this bit at the side here again. That you're going to want to uh, get it in. Just like that, there we go. So now it's routed all the way around. And yeah, there it is. So that's your two triggers attached back on. Okay, so a few little issues here. This keeps popping out because it's running on the top of this. So we need to get the D-pad back on. Um, so it's meant to go underneath this metal plate, uh, not just the D-pad, but this wire too. So if we pop this out, yeah, so we can kind of lift it up from this angle just pops off like that. The D-pad has these little tabs, but the one at the bottom is uh, smaller, so that's how you know that one goes at the bottom, that smaller one there. So you put it on like this, and then we're gonna put this wire as well down into its correct position. So we're just gonna get that in there properly so that it stays where it's supposed to be down in there. And then we will get this little metal plate and stick it back on. So this bit goes at the top, down under there like that. If we just get it in the right position here, it should pop on properly. There you go. D-pad should all be working now. All right, so um, we're getting close uh, to, well, we've got all the finicky bits out of the way. So now all we need to do is pop our sticks back on here. Pretty sure they're the same. So we're just gonna pop them back on, just like that. Make sure they're all working. All right, so next we have uh, this piece right here, the actual right bumper, left bumper. So of course they just go on the top like this. So obviously just line up the hole with the sync button and then uh, clip them on on either side. Make sure they're nice and clicky and we're good to go. 
And then we have this little piece as well that goes over the uh, USB and the sync button. So again, that just clips on. Just push it down at either side until these two clips go over the top. And then that's that on as well. Okay, so now we have to get these black wires on. Yeah, these can be quite tricky. So we try and maybe grab it with the tweezers and line it up over the slot and then just try and push it in with my finger. Yep, that got that one on. There we go. So yeah, those can be quite tricky. Um, but once you get them on, you are good to go. Tuck the wires into the little grooves that stick out. And then you're good there. There we go. So now all we have to do is put the front plastic casing on here like that all right and then turn it round upside down make sure that's on correctly then we get the back of the case stick that on and uh, obviously when you stick this bit on you need to make sure that the uh, that the pins for the battery these come through so, you know, you don't want it on like that where they're, you know, where they're at the back. You want those pins to be visible from the battery compartment. So, you're going to have to bring them in like that. There we go. So, now they are accessible there. The two pins that stick out. Okay, so I would recommend putting in the middle screw, first of all, just to keep everything in place. So, we'll stick that one back in and again security torque screws which is rather annoying that Microsoft did that again I don't know why they can't just be you know a bit more repair friendly in their uh, design they just deliberately you know don't want people to uh, to take apart their controllers which is rather irritating but anyway not great, Microsoft. You did good on the software side, but come on. Maybe show some love on the hardware side too. And make your controllers easier to take apart. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, I'm just putting all the screws back in now. There we go. So once you've got all the screws back in, just check to make sure that all the buttons are working. Left bumper, right bumper, that they all have that clicky sound to them and they're not too spongy or anything. So they're all good. So now we'll uh, go ahead and add these back. So they just clip on these little side bits that cover up the screws, the little grips at the side. So you just clip them into place like that. And there you go, you've got the controller back together. I don't actually have my Series X uh, plugged in right now, so I can't actually connect the controller. But just to show that it is powering up and working. If we put the batteries back on, put the batteries back on, put that back in. There you go. As you can see, controller is working. So anyway, guys, that's it. That's how you basically take apart the Xbox Series X controller from start to finish, uh, while also being able to put it back together, back into working order. Um, so yeah, for repair purposes, obviously cleaning, any of that kind of stuff or modifications that you're doing, whether you're swapping out the buttons or, uh, you know, doing a custom paint job on the on the casing or anything. Um, that is how you get it open and how you put it back together. So hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.